Today we are going to talk about functional groups in terms of reference table R and we are going to solve some of the regions based questions. So please make sure to have your reference table in front of you as we go through the video lesson. The first question is where we have to identify the chemical name uh, for this given compound. And to identify the chemical name, first we have to realize what do we have in this compound. I realize that I have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. If you have just carbon and hydrogen, that means you have hydrocarbon. However, if you have carbon, hydrogen, and something else, that means you have a functional group. In this case, I have a functional group which has oxygen. That oxygen has a double bond and it is connected with the carbon and that carbon has a hydrogen in one side and a carbon group on the other. You need to learn how to convert this into a general formula. So this information, you should be able to convert this into a general formula and this is how we do it. So I have oxygen double bonded with carbon in the right side, I have a hydrogen, and in my left side, I have another carbon group. I have to find this general formula in reference table R. And if you can do that, your questions will be very simple and straightforward. So if you're looking at the general formula from reference table R, you realize that this is aldehyde and if you look at the examples that are given it would guide you to name the compound correctly so anytime you have an aldehyde aldehyde starts with two letter al so anytime we have an aldehyde the compound name ends with those two exact letter al so in this question we have to count how many carbons we have first. So this is carbon number one, this is two, this is three. So I have three carbon, and therefore the prefix should be prop. I would suggest you to assume that it's an alkane before we name any functional group. It would make our life much easier. So instead of writing prop, I would just write propane assuming that it's an alkene. However, it is not an alkene. It is an aldehyde and aldehyde, all those examples for aldehyde, it would end with those two letters, A, L. And therefore, if this is a functional group of aldehyde, the name must end with A, L. So I'm going to erase the last letter, which is E. And I'm going to replace E with AL. And therefore, the final name, chemical name for this compound is going to be propanol. So remove the last letter and replace it with the letters that represent the functional group. Let's move forward with the next question. We have to name this compound. And again, I realize that not only I have carbon and hydrogen, I have oxygen. So the moment you realize that you have something else besides carbon and hydrogen, that means you have a functional group. And for this compound, on the right side, I have a carbon group. On the left side, I have another carbon group. So our job is to convert this information into a general formula. Again, this is the tricky part, but if you learn how to do this, the questions are going to be very simple and straightforward. This is how I would draw it. I have oxygen, double bonded, with a carbon. In the right side of this carbon, I have a functional group. In the left side of this carbon, I have another functional group. And you can write it as R prime. It doesn't make a difference. So then I have to find this general formula 
by using reference table R. So if you're looking at reference table R, the general formula matches the formula of a ketone. And if you look at the name, the example that is given for ketone, the name ends with O and E. So anytime you have a ketone, the name must end with O and E. So if we go back to this example, I'm going to count how many carbons I have. So I have one, two, three, four carbon. And therefore, I know I'm going to assume it's an alkane. So I would write butane. But then again, I know that this is not an alkane. It's a ketone, and usually ketones ends with O and E. So I'm going to replace these three letters with the last letter of butane. And now the name is going to be butanone. So keep things simple and straightforward. Do not make things complicated. First, assume that it's an alkene and write the name down and then replace the last letter of the alkene. Replace E with the letters that represents the functional group. And you should use reference table R to guide yourself. Then we have a question where it says, which atom is bonded to the carbon atom in the functional group of a ketone? I would highlight ketone, and I'll go to reference table R. And if you look at reference table R, if you look at the general formula, or even functional group formula, ketone have oxygen in it. So not only ketone has carbon and hydrogens, it also have oxygen in it, right? So therefore, if you are answering this question, which atom is bonded to the carbon atom in the functional group of a ketone, the answer is oxygen. All right, we have to uh, name this compound. And again, in this compound, not only you have carbon and hydrogen, you also have nitrogen in it. So it's always a good idea to highlight the part that is not just carbon and hydrogen. So I know that my functional group has nitrogen in it. So I will go to reference table R to identify which functional group has nitrogen. So you can see that there are two functional groups that has nitrogen in it. One could be amine or amide. But for amide, you not only have nitrogen, you also have carbon double bonded with oxygen. So let me go back to my question. I do not see anywhere um, carbon double bonded with oxygen. So I will go with the first option, which is amine. And usually for amine, the name ends with amine, right? And you have to count the number of carbon in it. So the name is very simple and straightforward. So we have one, two, three, four, five carbon. And therefore, I would assume that it's pentane. But if you look at the functional group, it ends with A-M-I-N-E, amine, right? Those letters. And therefore, I have to replace the last letter with these so I'm going to cross this one out and I'm going to write a m i n e and therefore the final name is going to be this since your uh, amine group is in your first carbon, you can also write it as 1 dash pentamine. All right.
which compound is classified as an ether, right? So we have to identify ether. To identify ether, we have to go to reference table R, and we have to see what is the functional group or general formula for ether, and it says O dash on both sides, which means oxygen in the center, and then you have two carbon group on both sides. So in this case, here, I have oxygen on the extreme uh, corner. So obviously, it's not in the center. I'm looking for a compound where we have oxygen in the center. And then I have here, it seems like oxygen in the center. Here, it seems like oxygen in the center. Here, it has two oxygen. So obviously, this is not our answer. This is not our answer. So we need to understand the difference between option B and C. If we break apart option B, we have CH3OCH3. So convert CH3 group as an R group. So you have R dash O in the center and then convert this group as an R group as well. And then you will get the general formula, which is ROR. And this is the general formula for ether. So option B is our correct answer. But you also need to understand why option C is not our correct answer. For option C, notice how carbon that is next to oxygen doesn't have any hydrogen. And if it doesn't have any hydrogen, it's a good indication that this is part of your functional group. Meaning, let's take a look at reference table R. So if you look at reference table R, there are many examples where you can see that we do not have a hydrogen next to the carbon, which is attached with an oxygen. So when carbon is attached with an oxygen, double bonded oxygen, it has less room to have hydrogen. So it's a good indica indicator that it might be a part of the functional group. For ether, you have to have oxygen in the center, and then you have to have two carbon groups, and those carbon groups must have hydrogen in it. And that's how we can recognize ether so option C is actually not an ether, even though it looks like one. It's actually a ketone, where you have two carbon groups on both sides of the carbon, which is in the center, attached with an oxygen. So make sure you review the functional groups uh, that are posted in your handout. I also reviewed this with another video where you need to understand that if it's an alcohol, it will, the name would end with OL. The chemical formula will end with OH. If it's ether, it was uh, the general formula, it's ROR. If it's aldehyde, the general formula usually ends with CHO, and the name ends with the first two letters from aldehyde, AL. If it's ketone, the name is very straightforward. It's going to end with ONE, ON or one. Uh, if it's acid, it's also very simple and straightforward. It's going, going to end with oic acid and the chemical formula is CH3COOH. If it's ester, the chemical formula would be C double O and then a carbon group and the name ends with O8. Amine group, the name ends with amine and amide group is also simple and straightforward. That's about it for functional groups. I will talk about another topic in our next video.